What is up you guys, back at you with another video and today we're going to be discussing the top 3D printer upgrades you can do for your 3D printer and I'm going to be doing this video in a very generalized concept, doesn't matter what type of model, brand or size of 3D printer you have, as long as this is a FDM printer, this video is for you. So let's go over the, I'm going to give you about five to six different awesome upgrades that I think are great for any FDM 3D printers. These are not in order of importance, and I want to do a little disclaimer before I get into the video. This is a subjective topic, okay? This is my opinion, and in my experience, this is the top upgrades I liked. Other people will have other ones. They may disagree with certain ones, but in my experience, these have really enabled me to do one of these three things. One, better qu print quality. We all want to have better, cleaner prints. Two, easier process. I want the workflow from start to finish be very, very quick, very streamlined so that it doesn't take a lot of sweat. I want the printer to do all the work for me. And last but not least, cool features, more things that I can do. I want stuff that enables me to do not basic stuff, but even do more things. And if it keeps it streamlined, keeps my print quality up, it's definitely an upgrade for me. So let's get into it. The first one that I'm going to talk about is, bam, the wham, bam, bed. Okay, so this is a very simple upgrade. It's just a flexible magnetic bed. And the reason I did this one was actually because my previous bed, yeah, it started to look like this. Uh, there's nothing wrong with these beds and you don't have to destroy yours like I did. My prints are just so stuck and it took forever for me to chisel them away off of it, change it to temps, wraps, all the settings. It, it can get you better results, but man, that wham bam flexible bed, you just pop your prints right off. You guys have seen it in my other videos. I love that upgrade. Probably the best investment I've put into the 3D printer. They also have other types of beds. This is also a flexible magnetic bed. It's just got a different texture for it. It depends what you're printing with, if it's PET, G, PLA, ABS even, um, some will give you better results. I personally like the regular Wham Bam Flex Bed. And the reason why I love it, one of the three categories, it's two. It gives me really, really clean prints on the bottom. My services are very much better leveled because I'm not choosing when smashing the whole printer bed and making it all unleveled. And two, it only takes me one flex to pop my printers off. A lot quicker to do 3D prints this way. Love that upgrade. Highly recommend it for you guys. If it's a little bit out of your budget to expand there's a link in the description for their site. I do have sometimes promotions going on. You can stick around with the channel and I might have a promotion for some of those and help you uh, offset the price for the wham bam upgrade. Now the second upgrade that I want to be talking about is Capricorn tubing. Some printers come with this, some don't. The CR10S Pro that I use and you see it all over my channel, it comes with one and actually a spare one too. If your printer does not come with these, I highly recommend you get one of these. They, they're blue little tubes. They're not expensive at all and they just get your filament fed much better, much cleaner, less clogs, no issues, keep your prints clean, less low maintenance. I mean, who would not want an upgrade for like three to five dollars for this? You get a whole kit for 15 bucks. If your printer doesn't have one of these, strongly recommend you looking into Capricorn tubing and seeing if you could add that to your printer to get your prints a little bit better. Now this next one is a very interesting subjective topic. All metal hot ends is an upgrade that I did do for my 3D printer. I used the Swiss one. Now the link is in the description for the exact all metal hot end that I used. My printer model, it comes with this annoying proprietary nozzle thread. And because of that, one of my previous nozzles broke and I couldn't replace it. And I just said, you know what? I'm going to replace the whole metal hot end. Now these are also a little bit more pricey, coming from 70 to hundred dollars. This is the previous one that I had on my thing. What it does do for you though, it keeps your print still clean still efficient, heats up a little bit quicker. So you do get some improvement on the quality, but more importantly for me is the fact that I can change my nozzle tips. And if you are also stuck with the proprietary threads on your nozzles, which isn't the case for most printers, but it was for mine, definitely highly suggest you look into getting a all metal hot end with the basic thread count, which leads me to my next upgrade. Nozzle tip sizes. Now this one may seem like an obvious one for some 3D printers, but some people that are beginners don't really think about this. They come with the point, default 0 0.04 millimeter nozzle and that's great and fine, but it's great to have a pack of these. These are like $15. You get from one millimeter, which is a giant nozzle, all the way to like a 0 0.02, I believe, maybe even a 0 0.01. These are really, really great tools to use when you're 3D printing because the amount of size you have on your prints will lower your quality, 
but maybe increase speed, like I use a 0.06 on mine, most of my prints, but going lower on the scale, like a 0.02, will increase your quality quite impressively. So definitely be thinking about that. It is something you need to make sure you tweak your settings in your slicer program when you change these out. But if you have not had any of these, definitely try experimenting with these. You'll see much better upgrades. And if you have that all metal hot end thing, or just a printer that doesn't have proprietary nozzles, it's really easy. Just twist it out, put another one in, make sure your slicer settings are good to go, correct, and you're good to go printing. You don't need to change anything else. It's a very, very good upgrade that I would strongly recommend you look into, and it's cheap. So I think every single 3D printer should have a pack of these on hand. So the next two are actually my favorite upgrades for a 3D printer. The first one is the OctoPrint. Now, if you have no idea what this is, it's a Raspberry Pi that you use specifically for 3D printing. If you don't know what a Raspberry Pi is, it's basically a small mini computer that's fairly inexpensive and you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. Now for OctoPrint, it's specifically just 3D printer stuff. This has done two things for me. Actually, I would say it knocks off all three. I am able to print quicker with this. I can do certain different settings. It's a lot quicker. I can control my printer remotely. There's so many tools. I'm not gonna get into that. And I talk about it in my other videos if you wanna check those out. But the OctoPrint gives you access to a lot of new tools and improvements. So arc welder is one thing that it can do. It actually improves how things are sliced and the curvatures, giving you better quality prints, a little bit faster, smaller file sizes. Those are all great things, but also you could monitor it remotely. And heck, it's really cool because you can do time lapses. I absolutely love using Octolapse. I'm sure you guys have seen those on my videos as well and probably hopefully enjoyed them. So I strongly recommend you looking into getting an Octoprint instance. If you have no idea what you're doing or about computers or anything like that, do not worry, it's really easy. There's a link in the description for the kit. That should be inclusive for everything you need. And there's plenty of video tutorials out there how to set up an OctoPrint step-by-step, very slowly. You don't need crazy coding knowledge. Once it's plugged in and it's running, you're good to go. And you can do so many great things with it. Strongly suggest you look into that because it gives you so many more features. Think of it as adding an Alexa dot to your 3D printer. You could do an amazing amount of new things with it, and I strongly recommend you guys look into getting that as a next upgrade. Now the last upgrade, but not least in any sort of way, is actually not a tangible item. A lot of people are thinking, oh, I can 3D print something to hold my filament better. I can do a really cool camera holder. I can change how the filament is fed. I can buy all these things, change my tubing, improve all that. That's, that stuff is nice, and it's incremental changes, but sometimes people get too focused in on that and lose the big thing you need for a 3D printer to get the best quality prints. And that is simply maintaining it. Make sure your belts are super tight. Make sure your bed is super level. I cannot express this enough. Your 3D printer quality is not dependent on the upgrades you put onto it. It's dependent on how you take care of it. If you understand all of the different parts and make sure every belt is fine tuned, all of the stuff is correctly leveled, and you just keep tweaking it as you're going through prints, because it's the machine's getting loose every time you're printing and it takes a while and us 3d printers love popping in another print go 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 you don't realize by print 55 your quality is really bad and you think your settings are off you bought wrong brand of filament you think you need an upgrade no in reality you just got to tune your printer always always try at least once a month take it off from printing, let it rest, get all those belts finely tuned and clean that bed, clean around it, get all that bed leveling done correctly, make sure that it's clean and absolutely pristine condition. And I promise you will see a drastic improvement of your prints, kind of like you remember them when you first got the printer. I remember I had the situation six months into 3D printing, all my prints just looked terrible. All the lines were insane, I had zigzagging, I had bad feeds, I had overhangs going that weren't working, and all it was was just my belts were really loose and I needed to maintain my 3D printer. So be sure to check those things out and do that. So you've watched the 10 minutes of this video almost. Thank you so much. I hope this information helped you. Let me know in the comments below if I missed an upgrade that you would strongly recommend. And if this video helped you out, smash the thumbs up, hit the sub button down below for really cool 3D printing tutorials me doing amazing stuff, heck, like the Iron Man suit behind me, or even the LED panels, or just, you know, you like listening to me talk, which that's a rare thing probably, but hit the sub button down below. You won't regret it. I promise you. Go check out my other stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next video.